Bring it on. How much more Garrosh will we see in this series, Dread? All I gotta say is bring it on. Okay. I just heard that at the end of the trailer, so that was the first thing that came you to my mind. You know funny as all of us did? Yeah. But I just felt like I had to admit it in case that was the only me thing. Again, I told you, you don't want to be trapped in this mind with me. <laughs> I feel like that's only another moment where you get a small glimpse and you're like, okay, I should avoid that. Of that, you and I are both certain. Yes. Game two underway, almost to be underway for the draft. It's going to take place on Tomb of the Spider Queen, chosen by superstars. Small map is going to be something that Superstars has always been more dominant on. Uh, they kind of like even a death have always been like the Dragon Tomb is more of the direction they like to move into. It seems like the one that they stand out the most. But let's go with more a conspiracy theory. Let's go with more of the Roll20 route, the Yoda transition over, and the favorite maps. We started the first map on Battlefield of Attorney, one of Roll20's favorites. Next was Tomb of the Spider Queen in that era, which means... We're following course with the, the, the Yoda's oh favorite God. maps are now. I shouldn't have brought it up. You shouldn't have. Can't <laughs> let it go now. It, never mind that it was sometimes picked by uh, superstars. Oh, yeah. And, no, it was. And uh, they have a lot of focus on wave clear, or they did when Srey was shot calling. Specifically the Johanna, right? That's yeah. like literally when I think of Srey, I go, Johanna. Uh, one of the few players in the world, other than maybe certain eras of Blumby. It was very Johanna centric. Sometimes Fury. Yeah, that's true, too. Mm -hmm. huh. Ain't that a thing? <laughs> Ain't that a thing? <laughs> no, Sunday night, HGC. It's a bit, you know, it's a bit <laughs> of a struggle bus, boys, but we're, we're powering on through. We're getting there. Well, I think it'll be very telling to see the draft for superstars. Um, what, what feeling, what era they're in, and maybe it'll even give us a hint as to which superstars we're seeing. If they're more focused on getting some picks, something that we're not used to superstars, the wave clear controlling the battleground. Maybe it is that they're feeling more confident in the Yoda shot calling in the way that he used to play a tomb with roll 20. Look at that chromie band. Hey, she's out everywhere, boys. North America wants nothing to do with that little thing. So what do we see banned out from superstars? Is it in fact going to be the Tassadar? Do we see banned onto Ariel? Ariel has more of an argument, again, because you can gain so much more value out of the earlier stages, but more importantly, it's a map where not only can you get it, you want those early front walls. Yes, you do. That, we didn't see uh, the Lunarial that was just everywhere for Lag Force in part one yet for them, but you have to think that it is still likely to be taken, but it does still feel like most teams don't want to pair the double true support. So maybe in that sense, a task oh, yeah. ban is enough for superstars. Yeah, a lot of teams, I mean, other than even in death, right? We're yet to see a full traditional double support be embraced. The Uther, that's a bit of a wild one there, just because you still can run a 1 1 3 with a powerful tri lane to accent that front wall that doesn't rely on the double support. So it kind of hands over the Ariel Uther conundrum over to the members of Lag Force, and they accept. They're like, thank you, we would like this. I hope they commit to a full double. I honestly do. I hope they take Rhaegar in the next rotation if Superstars doesn't take it, and then just proceed to ban out Malfurion and walk away with a big old W. Is this because Superstars wanted Tassadar? If they do want Tassadar, can you make an argument of any cross synergy that would be able to outweigh a traditional double support with the Lunara and Tomb of the Spider Queen? Tass Rhaegar. So they took the Rhaegar, but I still got me an opportunity to go into Brightwing if I felt like I need it. But if I do that, I don't need it before the secondary ban phase. Mm -hmm. I can wait till that goes off. So now we got to be patient. But, but what if Brightwing's banned? Yeah, it's not going to happen. How many times have you seen a support ban in this type of situation throughout of all North America Part 2? I can tell you one game is the only time I've seen it so far, and it all happened right. earlier today. And I don't think it's going to happen here. You are right. Like, there is that wild hair. I just, I, already my brain is, we've, we've counted that out. It's not even an option. We've made the adjustments. If I'm gonna get We've wild, done the math. If I'm gonna get wild strategies on here, okay, I gotta I gotta roll with certain assumptions in my draft, which is misplay on my opponent's side. You haven't said Chogol yet. That's going to be after the secondary ban phase yeah. if it comes out too. I don't think there's any world where Lag Force wants to take that risk. Wouldn't mind the gray main this high up, but again when you have a Oriole, I feel like it changes kind of the rules and aspects of the game. I hope more of we just stick to the Lunara and then whatever else they want to go with in this rotation. They may not even feel like they need to pick that that high. They do. And the Muradin. 
I guess they're... I'm going to claim that I assume that Muradin was with the assumption that their opponents are going to take Garrosh. Um, and they're going to let it go through now. Um, just because all cases of Murden, we've seen a huge spike in Murden in North America specifically, and it's only been in part number two since Garrosh has been allowed in. And this is, in no case can I look at this and be like, there is a direct reason why Murden gains higher value than anything else other than prediction of the future picks. And again, the general trend has been that is because Garrosh. What makes this task Rhaegar worth it for superstars? Give me a moment on that one. Can I take a rain check? Sometimes you, you ask bet. me really hard questions, and sometimes I'm not a bright enough young lad to be able to respond quickly. Malthale ban. I didn't think it would be Malthale. Yeah. So Malthale taken out. All versions of tasks that are enabled in compositions will most likely struggle. So then instead you have to go for overly sustained compositions, but if you do that, you're relying on your opponent not taking a double support. There has been this trend of Task Tracer on Tomb. Yeah. Started with Roll 20. Against Temple Storm at the original Western Clash was the first time we ever saw it. And then Gale Force. It played versus Gale Force, but Gale Force beat it from Space Station. Mm -hmm. And Mike talked about how strong it was. Gale Force brought it to the Western Clash. And now I've seen it played once in the European region. That was what I was worried about with the Task Rhaegar. I and Lag Force R2. Task Tracer are scary. The reason why I'm not concerned is it has no macro presence, and I can take the bright wing. I have the Ariel. I can run the double support. I can body this nerd. If you're going to yeah. pick that Tracer, I'm going to be the one saying cheers, love. Polymorph, cheers, love. Done. You're out. See you, nerd. No pardon gift. Doesn't matter. She's off the table. How come nobody ever throws banter back in Tracer's face like that? Because that seems like that would be the Here's perfect way. Here's my parting gift. Just, You're yeah, banned. Yeah. You're banned. <laughs> Seriously, nobody's throwing that cheers love sass right back at her. Is it just a Haka? I think Is it's got to be Arthas. If you're going to go in that direction with the Tassadar to make it worth it for the same fight, you got to go into the Arthas direction. Doesn't scream hip hip hooray, we've won the draft by any means, but. That's like where my brain has added this up with the high tasks that are without any intent, especially with Tracer removed. I think I prefer the Illidan above all else, even considering the size of the map. Do you like it more than Sonya? Ooh. I keep, I, I keep looking at that, and for some reason, Sonya's just jumping out at me. I really, honestly, I feel like Sonya is a little bit undervalued in yeah. North America, but only... I don't know if this is a case where I absolutely adore it, like a little bit, but in all of the situations where we keep talking about what is the direction superstars want to go, I always in my brain go, but they could double support and I lose if they do. Even though we can assume because all North America has been pulling away from it, it's still relevant on mm -hmm, this patch. Mm -hmm. And so every every suggestion you've given so far, it's like good, but if double support, I lose. So And I, that's why they left it open. Yeah, they have left it open. It can be whatever it is they want it to be. You they know? still got Garrosh. Are I, you I was letting my in I was pain I was intentionally or? trying to not let my memes be dreams is what I was doing there when we were I don't know. I heard it. I chose to ignore it. There's the Dahaka, so suddenly the Illidan is more incentivized as well when it comes to the laning mismatch, having a Tassadar on your side. She was up and they didn't get her. She was up and they didn't get her? Right wing. Oh yeah. You're we talking no. about that for if they're going to commit like to the all, double support? Yeah, all of the... We, you said we, but it was mainly me and getting triggered about double support <laughs> and the options through this draft circumstance specifically, yeah. So now what? They've seen it all. They have that spot left open. They don't have too much early game pressure on the other side of the table. They have really good team fight generically, but they struggle into the wave clear. I have Volatas. I should be able to come out on top. I either want immediate follow-up to make sure I get a kill potential with my solo garage, or I instead play more traditional macro, or I go with the tasks that are hyper carry. So that means... A wave clear frontliner that can also solo. It's got to be Arthas, Illidan, or I'm missing something off the top of my head. That's what I've come up with. Diva. Are they going to do the Diva throw? You Are they going to do the Diva throw? Okay, no. Leo. I just all of a sudden, I, it wasn't like I was, that was a for sure they're diva -ing. That's like a we haven't thought of Diva yet. Yeah, no, you're right. But uh, versus Medivh, you can portal people out, theoretically. There it is. How do we feel now that we know it's Leoric? Have we decided? Have we come to an inclusion? No? 
I'm a little bit scared. For superstars? You know, not really. Like, I feel like it... I don't feel like it was maybe the most optimal in terms of what it's going to gain. Like, the biggest thing that the Leo does is, again, on the other side of the table, well, they struggle into wave clear, so what side laner can I get with heavy wave clear? They, they met the same parameters I set before. It just wasn't the avenue that I thought they would, you know? And I also forgot about the Leo. I hope it's a Royal Focus because there is no wave clear on the other side of the table and because I love Royal Focus. Uh, but mainly, if you <laughs> abuse the lack of wave clear that they have levels yeah. 1 through 9, you get one turn in. Lag Force can literally have the whole entire first turn in, and I go, you aren't going to make much happen with it. Then I turn it on my own, and I just control the map from that point on, and I shouldn't lose. The thing I like is that between throws from Garrosh and a 50-second uh, cooldown in Tomb, there are a lot of different ways of forcing defensive cooldowns from Lag Force. Crystal Aegis, uh, Leyline Seal, force those things. You still have something else to be able to re-engage in the fight. That might be the way that Superstars are able to make this. And, of course, Superstars have a lot of wave clear, which we thought that they might. Let's get into this game and see if Superstars can tie up the series with Lag Force and take us to Game 3. I mean, I guess we have a Game 3 anyway, but take us to it on a 1-1. One -one. You know, in a world. sometimes when you try and recover, <laughs> I feel bad for you. And I don't know how to make you feel any better about it, you know, directly. Like, it's just, just, I just have to sit here and The best watch. way is for you to bring it up immediately I, after I, and I, let I, me know about it. I just it. don't know how to. <laughs> I'm just sitting here watching the world burn, Gilly. I just, you know, I'm trying. Maybe try a little less. You know, sometimes I, I, I'm, I'm over it. We're going with Lag Force and right. Superstars here. They're running a 1 3 1. More like a 3-1-1 considering the positioning of those, but that's an interesting choice from Life Force. It's common whenever you have the Lunariel. Is that is that official? Yes. We have embraced that. It is the Miranda, the Lunariel. Mm -hmm. Well, if you have a Lunariel composition, traditionally you do have superior lane control on one half, and with the Dahaka being reasonable into the Leo matchup, it's going to be really awesome to see how this laning goes. I assume it is going to be held a 2-1-2 for Superstars, purely based on that dominant laning from Life Force. Yes, we've got Tassadar and Leo in the bottom. Daihu with the first flip of the game. Maybe the last. Ooh. Well, that's what armor plus attack shield. I have so <laughs> I wanted to talk about what what just happened in terms of the actual mathematic effect of health of Daihu right there. That was ridiculous. 43? Yeah, 43 armor plus a Tassadar <laughs> shield, meaning that, and also Lunara, go oh man, that's gonna be a Stormbolt connecting Yoda. I don't think he's got out of this one. No. First blood over to Lag Force. They get another drag dimensional shift. He's gonna be all right. Hosi survives. But with that amount of armor, that amount of shielding, oh man, it's gotta be so hard to be able to get those kills. Maybe that was the Tassadar, you know, consideration. We failed to appreciate Tassadar plus a Garrosh equals... You know what happens at four? What happens at four? Fifteen more armor. Yeah, that's a good point. So, you know, it's only going to get harder as things go on here for Lag Force. Unless Wait. they want Kala's Embrace. Good Whoa. dodge there from Iacona. Gets Iacona to safety. So far, just back and forth in the laning. Set up, trying to deal with this four-man rotation from top to mid from Lag Force. We've got uh, Medivh kind of going all over, trying to join back up with the team and Ahaka in the mid. And every time they do that, they have the possibility of trying to catch somebody here. Because is looking for the drag yet again. Not fighting it, we'll go back to the bottom. It's all about who concentrates on turn-ins first. And again, I do assume that Lag Force will be the team looking to make that happen early on. It's just I'm also assuming that they're going to not make a lot happen with that first Weber Weaver face. And if, if that is the case and Superstars look for a rebuttalment afterwards, it really could be a hard time. It's just with that Lunariel combination and getting the pressure onto the front walls, that traditionally means you're going to really be able to body with these turn-ins. But they haven't got much pressure outward. They're rounding towards that 50 gem count. And traditionally, North America does not wait for their turn-ins. They really like to just bust it out. My boy, Royal Focus coming back. You can depend on Airho. Royal Focus. So for anybody not familiar, not watching the European region where this is far more, more common, if Leo's body doesn't take damage when he's hitting Wraith Walk, which it's going to here, uh, it will reduce the cooldown to four seconds. And it also increases the damage of your next skeletal swing. His body's going to take a lot of damage as he dies. 
It does 50% more damage, so you can use this to rotate between multiple lanes quickly and just clear out the waves, get them pushing a lot versus your opponent's base. And you generally combo it with Lingering Apparition at level 7 so that you get that increased duration for your Royal Focus. Given here the lanes are so close together, do you think we will see something different than Lingering Apparition, or do you think we'll still see that combo? I, I do think we'll still see the Lingering Apparition, but I, I don't think it's as must have as we have seen a lot of other royal, fake, uh, royal focus taking in other parts of the world. I feel like it's uh, it's really good and synergistic, yes, but must have, not quite the case. So, But I, I, I feel like in this game specifically, with the Dahaka to be able to match him, it makes a lot of sense to still take that direction and use the mobility that you have there. Another thing we got to be highlighting here through this game is Urho, looks like he's going to be going down, is iDream's Medivh. He is doing a very good job at constantly, not only enabling through portals, but more importantly, Big Impact's been flipped three, four times. Every time, the Force of Will is there to save the day. He'll need those skills as he reaches level seven and gets the Master's Touch. I was thinking about it. Uh, you know, we, I would you be You don't astounded. want to cone a Master's Touch, you know? Yeah, that's a, there you go. I was like, if he doesn't take Master's Touch, I would be astounded. I'm ready to see what is the new Medivh build then, because that is probably the, I don't know, actually, he's probably some of the least talent diversity of almost any hero in competitive heroes, you know? You can rely on the build every single game. We don't even get circle protection, and that thing is crazy! I don't, this may be the first time you guys are hearing about circle protection, but it is not the first for me. <laughs> we didn't get uh, Lingering Apparition, Ghastly Reach. So now you've got increased range on the Skeletal Swing. Helps him make sure that he can hit a lot of the back line of lag force with the slows. It's really going to be able to aid with initiation too because we don't often refer to the initiation. Wow, Yoda walking out a bit too far there. The Web Weaver, I think, even got a bit of the MVP. Dai or I Dream being a problem, causing havoc there even on the Daihu. Pleasantly surprised with the Midi play from him Amazing here in this game. Amazing synergy from Tomster and Zuna. Follow up to Tame and Strike, but Hosty has his dimensional shift. The damage has been dealt from this first Webweaver phase. Lag Force have brought down the first fort, the mid fort of Superstars. Push that back. They're going to have heroic abilities far and above Superstars, and they're working on getting their next set of Webweavers. If this is a boss turn in play, this would be huge. Even if it's just a turn in play with 10 spike and pressuring any lane other, I mean, any keep whatsoever. It's just more important that Lag Force essentially chooses an objective that they can really force the response out of Superstars and cripple their ability to get that side soak. Heroic's coming online. We still get the Thornwood Vine here from Lag Force. Been the staple for them as a roster and still more popular at other sections. Icona drop in the pre-cleanse. Enough to make Daihu survive. But it's all about can Superstars survive when this Webweaver phase comes online and can they get the 10 as it's happening? Because there's no way they're going to stop it before. Yeah, Lag Force are ramping up to get that turn in as quickly as possible. Yoda dodges Stormbolt, but B-Kid's there for a follow-up drag. Hits Airho, Wraith walking out, drops it. Portal play. Nobody's getting too wild to turn in attempt up on top, but Biggie's there to get the stall out. 30. If Icona gets this, he in fact will Dahaka. have enough. Oh no, he's got 30 gems. Detainment strike from Tomster. Iacona can't get out of here. Oh, that ley line was brilliant. Now nobody can make it to the gems, even if there was a question of that moment. Now the portal here from Drag. I Dream. Drag follow up the poison damage. He's going to be pulled away from the rest of the team, but Daihu will still go down as he's chased down by a very angry dinosaur V Kid. Two kills before superstars can get heroic abilities and a ton of gems lost for superstars. Even if they're able to get a turn in now, at some point after this is done, maybe after they lose both of those forts, it's still not going to be in a way that they can combo as effectively and try to make the comeback on Tomb. Superstars have got to find a way to make a fight happen here, and they cannot lose it. The experience right now and the intensity of the next couple of seconds is very, very huge. It's going to sway one way or the other. Good drag. Forcing the early Aegis is going to flip afterwards. No Zona making his way in. Good force wall. You know, for a moment, Big E was second guessing if he wanted that Thornwood Vine. Here comes the flank, the Entomb, Rain Avenge is dropped down, but at the end of the day, Urho is in fact the one running away like a scared cat. Yeah, he has 25 gems, Detainment Strike hits him again, and these are going to drop. Lag F do their best to zone away from the primary, the 20 gem. 
flip, but a portal to allow Zuna to escape. Webweaver still behind this. I love seeing the different or the uh, interplay between the portals and the force wall. This will get better once Lag Force can get 13, but then at 20 when you can get the cooldown reduction for force barrier. But it adds a whole other level having the Bedeev versus the Garrosh too. So there should be enough gems-ish, I believe, in the hands of superstars to get a rebuttal turn in. Not even quite the case. They're around in about 30 they in have their some, possession. They had some turn They had 30 in. turn in. Yeah. You are correct. So they do have enough for that turn in immediately after this. But the whole talent here down, we're now a big enough advantage, or a, excuse me, disadvantage in the experience department to where they have to start considering what is going to be their fight. And... I feel like it's got to be 13-15, and then not only, because it's going to happen around the Web Weavers or around the boss, the turn-in or around the boss, but if they do it around the turn-in, they try to get the initiation, they zone off the members of Lag Force, but Lag Force doesn't lose anyone. What they find themselves in the circumstances is they won to force the turn-in, but they lost the window where they have the advantage, so then 16 is going to hit for Lag Force, and Web Weaver phase failed. So, I mean, it is legitimately, I would be willing to argue that this next fight, if Superstars fails at it, it is now just going to be a near unwinnable game. You know what's crazy? In phase one, we talked about Superstars' inability to make a comeback and figure out what they needed to do to come back, find those conditions where they would be able to catch back up after being behind. And then versus Neventic, they got behind and had that 13 into 15 fight. And that was the first time we ever saw them take that fight, take the right spot, knowing and identifying and using that time to get back into the game. And they ended up winning that game, and that was a huge turning point for them as a team. Now they're once again down on Tomb of the Spider Queen against Lag Force. We'll see if they can do it again here. This is another clever way to make up for that. Uh, it's essentially with the two-man boss that nobody's going to be expecting. Uh, you know that Lag Force is making pressure elsewhere under the map, so then you force a response onto the boss, which buys you a pretty big window to force the turn in immediately after, but you have to be considering your resource commitment and what power spike Lag Force is going to hit. This boss is going to be out of the 16th threshold, but the Web Weaver phase soon to come is not the case, so they can use this to just buy time, Wait, worry about the 16, which most likely is going to make them lose the next wave Web Weaver phase. But I think the boss was a clever enough play to actually buy them that time window we've been so concerned about. Yeah, they did a fantastic job of showing in the lanes so that it was never a huge question. There were a ton of people off the map so that Lag Force could come in and steal that. Lag Force now needs to deal with that. They're saving on turning in until they can deal with that boss. They don't want to waste any time with that turn in. It's going to be such a huge spike for them because they will have 16. And this is the exact window we were talking about. Not only do the superstars not need this fight, they need to win it and actually kill people because if they fail to do so and just turn in, they're losing the 16 talent here as they've turned in their web weavers. Man, Airho got all of his gems turned in and it's one gem short from getting those web weavers. There's still time for the fight, but they're running out of time. The window is closing to make something happen. Blank coming in here for Ruho up above. Portal's going to be laid down. I Dream's the one to take it. Force wall drop, but nobody zoned out. At the end of the day, nothing gained, nothing lost. The boss on top's just about to fall as it does end up dying. 16, still closing in for Lag Force. When is Superstars going to make a move? Are they going to? Leo backing away indicates that they are accepting their fate over this next Web Weaver phase. They will take the Web Weavers 12 minutes in, down as 16 talent here. Superstars are still out on the board. Zuna has one gem less than needed for a turn in. Jumping on top of Daihu. I brush dream, stock. I dream. The brush stock from B-Kid, the portal immediately taken. Yoda's gonna be the focus here in the Dark Swarm, getting the damage, the drag, cleanse, ancestral, it goes off, but Daihu dying off on his own onto the side. Zuna with the Dwarf Toss, Stormbolt. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter. With one pick up, a Web Weaver clocking its way down those lanes. What does Superstar do? How, I mean, Hosey buying time. This is a, honestly really, really good, but I don't know if it's enough. Out his force wall, slowing things down. Then he ease. The trap comes in. And Jukes, the opposite Shield. direction, I believe. Watch, he's going to mastermind this. Look at that unfair advantage damage. Feels bad. Maybe I was giving more credit than it. You know, I don't know. Maybe he'd given the, been watching too many Tassadar Jukes out of the Eastern Clash. What that does is 30 seconds without Tassadar to help defend versus the Web Weavers. 
And Superstar still are a long way off from having 16. Airhawk gets caught again. It is Leoric. He comes back faster. They're still bringing down these members who are helpful, really helpful, in taking out the Web Weavers. Superstars use the time while lag after going after Airho to take out mid Web Weaver. That's no longer as much of a concern, although lag after waiting, watching for someone to show in either of the other two lanes, and then they could start to poke on the keep. Soon is still sharking on bottom with the Haka up towards top. It's only going to be the three man with their host spawning. It's enough to scare the members away for a moment. The, all the web weavers are cleared up. There are enough gems for a turn in here for superstars, and without the keep being picked up by Lag Force, Lag Force essentially did not gain enough for that unwinnable type circumstance to kind of come online. So we find ourselves now in a situation where really superstars got to be beyond thankful. Between the tacit or chase, the sneaky boss play, they're doing all the right things here. Even the Leo chase gave them time to clear out that mid. That entomb! Forcing the Aegis for free over the wall. Reign of Vengeance immediately after. Flip, taunt, it does not matter. That is a dead Lunara. Drag does not make a big impact there with a beautiful Ancestral. Guy who's going to pull Lag F. Zuna right back in, but a portal's there. Airho already chasing down to see if he can get to the other side of the portal, getting some slows, trying to catch somebody as they make the escape. But the rest of Lag F get away, quickly identifying that as soon Close. as their battery for Ariel was there, they were brought down, and they're escaping. Channel for Icona, that's enough for that turn in. Same and strike not there for Tomster, and we've got that Web Weaver phase. Ooh, now we got to take a minute to consider where the minion waves are. They are far onto the side of Superstars, so they are going to have to spend a lot of time to pressure those out, which gives a lot of time for Lunara to spawn. We also have to consider that mid is most likely to be the heaviest pressure because the both mid and bottom four still ex exist. Look at the positioning. They're collapsing in on Hosty. It's Tassadar. He's got There's one E. Drag. Where does he go? He's going to get caught. He can come right out of the portal. The ball is there with the force wall. The team's starting to jump they in don't have on Lunara. some of the members. They have the taunt. They don't have Lunara in this fight at all. Lag F needs to get on full retreat here. Zuna doesn't have a portal coming online for about one more second. Expect that to be thrown down in the members' retreat. But what can we see superstars make happen? Tomster. Tomster! He's going for the portal, which he got slowed to the totem of Iacona. He is lucky to make it out there. Hat back on Lunara and Lagaf are ready to brawl. Now that they have their battery back, Daihu fairly low, getting caught from the force wall. The ball has already been brought down. That's the first to fall in this fight. The whole time, though, the Web Weavers are still pushing. They've taken out the top fort and they finally land as Daihu goes down. This has been so chaotic. Where do we? Where are we? We're back at. So still fortless on the side of Superstar. Still two level disadvantage. Enough gems for a turn in for both sides. Oh, almost for that of Black Force, but definitely not for Superstars. But they're gonna be down the 20, they're down 30 more seconds. Boss is gonna be started by Lag Force. That was such a brilliant window for them and it felt like they were trying to be able to take it, but then after all the chaos of how that unfolded and everybody's kind of going like, is this the fight we really wanted? How is this gonna happen? Well, it was, they collapsed on TAS, but TAS got out. Superstars rotated back there. Then they there was sort of a counter collapse on top of them. There wasn't Lunara there because she had been taken out in a retreat earlier on. What they did do was force Superstars to fight for a little while, but it was kind of to their detriment because the Web Weavers were pushing for Superstars and that let Top do so much damage. So now Top Keep is fairly low. But there's a boss in 20 and a two level lead for Lag Force. It's hard to figure out who came out ahead from all of that mass chaos. But because Lag F were still ahead before, it's safe to say it was them. The biggest thing, too, is that those Web Weavers, as our hope inevitably goes down here, is that they're going to be wasted for Superstars. It does stop them and buy them free time on the top half to deal with that. Uh, boss up there, but they are now down a lot of gems, enough to where they have no turn in for a long while after this Web Weaver phase, whereas Lag Force does, and that is going to be their win condition, essentially, with that ne next Web Weaver phase. Lock into the turn in, use the 20 advantage, but they are still all three keeps up, which normally to end the game on Tomb of the Spider Queen with the Web Weavers themselves, that means you have at least mid keep down, typically, and then you rely on the split pressure or top keep. Uh, and the split pressure of the other Web Weavers, keep them busy, 
then look to core whenever the damage on shielding's down. Well, let's start thinking about the level 20 power spikes. Lunara only scales scarier and scarier with her poison. We've got Shield of Hope to deal with the uh, damage when all the area damage starts to come into effect for superstars, giving some extra sustainability time for the team. Um, Guardian of Tears fall to keep the pressure going against superstars, and in the event that Black Force lose that top keep, they'll still be able to clear out the catapults pretty quickly. But then again, they still have Dahaka too as that global. Over for superstars, we're just waiting on Force Barrier. That becomes a uh, hindrance against Lag Force whenever they're trying to escape. And if they make a wrong move all the way over at the base of Superstars trying to siege down of Keith, that could be a place where Superstars could wipe the team of Lag Force running away because it, the interplay with the portals becomes that much more scary for a team once you have Force Barrier. And Spectral Leech as a potential pick for Leoric, but Leoric has a lot of scariness at level 20, Farflight Quiver. I'm a big fan of Spectral Leech because mm -hmm. I like chunking my opponents with every auto attack for a billion damage. It feels good, it heals you on top of it, you know, it's a win-win. For everyone but Lag Force, so I don't know if that counts right. as a win-win. You're right, you know, I didn't consider the secondary win in that win-win statement. It's a win-win, but maybe not a win-win-win. Win. <laughs> exactly. You know, about that win-win circumstance, you know we're gonna have to talk about, about that. Top keep dead, Web Weaver making it to the core. His lag F getting that pressure out. Actually, Yoda falling low enough to die. He does get a shield. He's gonna have heals. Double keep now for lag F. The biggest thing here is that lag F has been in control the whole game, but now we're, what, 70 gems? So we've seen three whole turn in Web Weaver phase. We've seen one boss and it's 20 minutes in the game, and we just now got those keeps to drop. We're now at the time where they have to find the win condition. Third, third, fourth, whip, fourth, fourth. Look at that. There fourth. were four turn ends. Look at that. That's how far down the road we are. Yeah. It's not often that I see 70 on that. Or if it is, it's like as a team is sieging down the keep, yes. the web weaver's in. And the game is over. And it shows 70, but it's like, well, that's not going to need to happen because the core is, in fact, dead. So what I'm trying to get across here is they're – not necessarily gaining as much out of their advantages and objective use as they should be. And we know that's always got to be a focus and concern, especially Daihu getting caught out like this. The drag after that brush dock, the shielding is there. I don't think it's going to matter. Ancestral, uh. Storm Shield, Leyline. This is a full-blown fight. Warlord's Challenge catches the couple. They have the follow-up. Reign of Vengeance after that. But all of the members of Black Force are very healthy, and Superstars had to start that with a disadvantage because they had to early Ancestral Daihu. Black Force marches forward, slowing down. Thornwood Vines ripping through Yoda. As he will go down with three kills. Black Force starts to move onto the core, bringing down Tassadar. Only Leoric is left. They should be able to close out this game number two and tie us 1-1 in the series. My, just everything about that, how that played out. Black Force, though, at the end of the day, they got the early lead, they never let go of it, and they win, I mean, 17-1 to in kills? Making it happen here. On their map, they lose. On Superstar's map, they end up winning. Up no is down, cats and dogs living together. No idea what's gonna happen for the rest of the series. Sloths are winning, they're doing things. Being active, doing more than just hanging out next to the tree. It's so cute. It's rather cute, huh? We're 1-1. One, one. Between Lag Force and Superstars, this is such an important match between the two. Lots of Crucible implications. Lag Force needs this win even a little bit more so than Superstars because they were behind in the standings and because Superstars beat them in part two. The they're on their way to doing it. The biggest thing is I feel like with that last game is just every ounce of the composition where I felt like Superstars should have had the upper hand. They maybe weren't moving as hard as they can. Even with Lag F not gaining a lot out of every Web Weaver phase, at the end of the day, it was just like, okay, here's where superstars can recover. And then they just slightly struggle. They go almost even, and it's like, but that was where they had to get that win um, to turn that game around. And it just felt kind of out of control. I feel like on a less snowball-ish map, uh, they, they would be more likely to get a win there. So we'll see if it gets better on, uh, especially like Dragon Shire. That's one that I hope that we get to see from them. I don't remember if it was banned. If so, then that's no. going to be a set ban. Then I want Dragon Shire. We'll see if it's Dragon Shire for game number three after this break. We'll be back soon. Stick with us. Introducing HGC Cheer. To bring more hype to HGC this year, 